line. This is Will, Brad's well, here. I'm good for maybe five or six items on the, uh, the bingo tonight, okay? So come say hi. Uh, but before we do that, first of all, Adaptivist is a fairly sizable company. We do some business, and we've got several products that are available on the marketplace. So who can name one? Drip runner? Who said that first? You. <laughs> Come on, now, now last, if you were here last month, you might remember we, we had a product that started with a P, ended with Project something. <laughs> ah, now, if we don't get your sizes right, you come see us afterwards and we'll hook you up. Uh, one word that, so, adapted this, we've got Script Runner. We also have Script Runner for Confluence, so I'm not going to count that one. Uh, Project Configurator. Has anyone heard about our testing product? It's you. Oh, 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 that was that was high and outside. <laughs> Anybody else? One more, one more. Before we before I hand it off to Will. No? Oh, oh just okay, fine. I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> All right. So tonight we have a great presentation for you with Will I am Rojas presenting on initiatives and automation within Jira. Really excited. He's going to pre present you with some uh, fairly informative things. I have on good authority that they're fairly informative. So thanks, everybody. Come say hi to us. We really want to want to talk and enjoy yourselves tonight. Uh, William, take it away. Hey, how are you all doing? How's everybody doing tonight? Good. 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 So we want to talk about initiatives and sort of initiative that's like about the epic, basically. And then we'll, we'll talk a little about like where they position, what they are, and so forth. And then uh, some work that we've done with one of our clients to actually automate uh, the, the work that goes around an initiative as you would work, because you know, we'll see when we get the presentation, th there needs to be work on, on across a couple of tools, and that kind of raises a, a bit of a maintenance problem. So we'll talk a little about some of the, the automation. And, uh, I may switch laptops, I have a demo I can try to show you, and then if it all goes well, we'll switch over, and then I'll show you a bit of a live demo of what we've done with them as well. Okay? So, what are initiatives in the first place? So, initiatives are basically high level pieces of work. Often, we just talked before, like often teams got, we had a bunch of stories and so forth, but what, what came before the story? So, hopefully, you, uh, especially in large organizations, we have teams. Uh, business teams, product teams that are sort of looking at like the, the broader kind of bigger piece of the portfolio kind of further out, that's what the initiatives are for. That's what, so any new ideas that come into the company or the business from market or whatever the case, that's basically what we want to use the initiatives for. They, they try to sense what they, uh, what you want to use them for is like any, anything that new, new product or new features of a product, but big chunks of work. That's sort of the, the thing we want to remember about them. And they're trying to, uh, as we, as you look at the initiatives, like what they are trying to cover is either work across that eventually, we don't necessarily worry about that up front, but eventually may hit multiple projects, multiple containers within Jira. They may hit multiple boards. They may ultimately go into multiple teams. But the idea of the, having the initiative like that up front is that Initially, you don't worry about that, right? You just basically, here's a big chunk of work that we need to do. What is this work all about? Who owns initiatives? Initiatives are, are best positioned in a product owner type role. So this is, we're talking PMO. Uh, we're talking people that, that either, again, like where should my product be in the next 12 months, the next 24 months? That's what we're looking for. And, and basically what you're looking for is that balance between what do I want to do from a business, from a marketplace, what do I need to do to satisfy customers? What kind of technologies do we need to look at? Where's the technology at? And that's basically what product managers are supposed to play. And initiatives are, are what we basically want to use to help them speak in their language, basically. So as I mentioned, initiatives is above an epic. That's how we want to kind of the best represent it. So one of the things important about this is that uh, we want to keep them within business context. And again, something, you know, if teams are delivering stories which are meant to be completed within a sprint, so, you know, at most two weeks with the work, epics are bigger than that, initiatives are even bigger than that. Uh, so one of, the thing, one of the things I always tell clients is like, uh, we're, not, we're not solutioning, we're not trying to define things in terms of, I want this product to do this necessarily, but I want this kind of capability, I want this new idea, and then let the, the, the workflow of working through the initiatives take care of what epics and what stories eventually will be delivered. Why do we want these? Essentially what we're looking for is you want to you be able to have consistency across how 
new ideas are, are worked through uh, the organization and eventually what you ultimately end up assigning to teams is something that uh, makes a lot of sense and has a lot of value and so forth. So basically, we're trying to avoid stuff like this. Right? So somebody decided something, sent an email, and said, yeah, that's fine, and then it comes to turn out like nobody vetted it out, nobody looked at it, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So we probably, how many of these, how many of you have ever kind of run across something like this before? <laughs> yeah, so I've seen my share. So let's talk a little bit about the funnel, right? So the, the, one of the things that the, 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 the what we want to try to do with this is just use, use them to kind of work through that initial upfront funnel. So first of all, uh, we want to go from something that is uh, very fuzzy, maybe this, maybe that, we're not too sure, what would that look like, so forth, to a well-formed idea, something that's pretty concrete, has been bought in, uh, maybe there's some, some bias from some customer really wants it, and you have an understanding of what that would be, uh, etc. <laughs> we talked about before this idea of pruning, right? So not all ideas are going to be something you want to ultimately pursue. So we need, a, we need the ability to say, kill that one. Take that one off the queue, we're not going to take that any further. So the, the funnel process should be such that you're, we're making, asking the right kinds of questions and doing the right type of assessment, saying is this something we should be pursuing? Is it worth it, you know, the return on this, not worth the investment we're going to get? If it isn't, kill it up front, right? Don't wait for your team to start working on it and then decide, hey, you know what, maybe it's not a good idea after all. Another thing that's very important about the initiatives is you want to have the ability to say, I have 100 ideas, I can deliver you know, four at a time, and when I'm ready to deliver those four, then yes, I'm ready to commit to that. Right? So this idea of kind of managing your work in progress, right? and, and, and it starts at the top. Right? So you don't want to have the teams working on 50 different things all at once, because ultimately, you're going to get a lot less out of those teams if that's how you want it to operate. So, uh, the, the having that funnel and using something like initiative that are, are still in that assessment stage, you're not ready to, to it says commit to, to roadmap it, uh, is very helpful. And then the other thing that's useful about this is that you want to create a, a way to separate my big ideas that the product managers are talking about and the architects and so forth are kind of vetting it out whether something we want to pursue or not, and what the teams, the delivery teams are actually working on. So having separate places where you manage initiatives from where you manage your ethics and your sprints and your stories that, that are going to sprints and teams are working on is also very helpful, very important. Okay? So, so we have like what are they and sort of what, how, they, how the workflow we, uh, works for them. So now let's talk about the, like the, the general workflow of, of the initiative is basically going to be upfront and, and Let's just say, regardless of what kind of methodology and workflow you're using, it's going to kind of fall into this. So, so I don't. So, so we can kind of put a different specific process or organization may have. What does viability mean for us? And there's be many stages to that potentially. But the idea here is up front. We're looking for like, is this something that's viable and feasible for us to actually pursue? So therefore, things like, what's my elevator pitch? What's what's the value proposition? What's the business case? What um, kind of impacts do we have to the overall systems? That's all stuff that we want to kind of define up front. Uh, what are the first level order of estimates of this? You know, how, how big is this? Is this bigger than a bread box, smaller than a bread box? Uh, what type of priority, right? How important is this relative to what's already there? So give me an ability to prioritize some of this. Um, and then, therefore, we're now talking about some kind of backlog. And it's an initiative backlog. We're not ready for, for global level backlog. We want the ability to do this. So as you can see, tools like Jira and Confluence let you do this kind of stuff. Right? So, so in a sense, I'm basically making the case where where would you put this? Well, you can put some of the stuff in Jira, you can put some of the stuff in Confluence. So that's the viability. Then, then we're going to get into like what is the, the roadmap and plan that we want to do around this, right? So now that we've ready to commit. What do I want out of it? So I probably want some KPIs. I want to elaborate, right? So I want to probably probably look at some of those architectural impacts and then kind of vet them out before I'm ready to commit. I make sure that I have. We talked about before, like that, that you've done. Uh, you've at least identified the needs. Maybe maybe rework some components, stuff like that. You want to know that up front. Uh, what kind of impacts it's going to have to whatever we have already in flight? Uh, the ability to then break it down, you know, to like at the now now that I have my initiative ready to commit. I'm ready to now break it down into, okay, this may be the kind of epics we're looking at, the kind of teams that we may need to get involved, 
what type of milestones we're looking at. So second order of estimation, right? So now estimate from an issue down to maybe an epic. And uh, looking at what kind of dependencies, prioritizing, and dealing with epics backlog. Then the next, the last stage of, of this kind of workflow that you want to run this is sort of like delivery and tracking. So now we're ready for what often a lot of people work to use Jira for, right? And we're ready to kind of give epic to teams and have those teams work with sprints and stories and so forth. Uh, so we want to get them going, track, track the work. Uh, one of the things I'll show you is that sometimes teams want to like, okay, now that I'm ready to start the stuff, I have these 50 stories I want to always do, so give me the ability to kind of give me those 50 stories up front, hopefully you can create them by, by hand. There's some performer work that maybe we do. Uh, and obviously, again, more of the stuff that we, we typically see in, in typical projects, want to work on sprints, track releases, more dependencies, more prioritization, uh, backlogs, teams have their own backups and so forth. So, a good initiative workflow should let me accomplish those three things, and there should be clear stages in which, yes, I'm doing the viability, now I'm road mapping, now I'm actually looking at the delivery. Okay. So, as I said, I think what I was trying to do before, we have, making a case for like, there's some work I need to do on the Jira side, there's some work I need to do on the Confluence side. And, and it's not one or the other, it's really both. Um, so this introduces a bit of a problem. And what we've been working with, one of our, we did some work with one of our clients, is the, the, to be able to, in a sense, make that dual side somewhat seamless. So for example, one of the things that we worked on, and this is sort of the process that we created, uh, the ability to say, look, I have an initiative page in Confluence, and I've kind of come up with some information, and at some point it's okay, yeah, this is good, I, I'm ready to commit to it, right? So it's a good idea. Uh, maybe I got an elevator pitch, and somebody said, okay, tell me more. Now I want an issue in JIRA, so automatically create that issue for me, uh, make sure that the issue goes in the right place, make sure that uh, uh, this particular example we were working on, the team was, uh, there, okay, so that's, but the team was using a version to, to, to deliver that initiative, so we were creating versions for them, but ultimately the, the main thing we're after is kind of creating an initiative in JIRA that will map to the page, the initiative page in Confluence, and make that automatic, so that I didn't have to do it both, and then, link them up so that you know this initiative is linked to this issue, et cetera. So I'll show you a little bit of that in the demo piece. And then another thing that we worked on with them is I said to mention those, those pro forma where at some time at a certain stage in, in, the, in the process, I'm ready to build up a bunch of my backlog. And, and again, some organizations may not apply everywhere, but some organizations sometimes say, I have these 10 or 20 or however many stories that when I go into this stage, I would like my backlog to have that up front, and then yeah, I'll, I'll tune up from there, but give me something to start with. Don't make me do it by hand. So, as you may know, Script Runner is a great product for this kind of stuff. Whenever you have these kind of problems, Script Runner will say, hey, we can just do Script Runner. So that's basically what this project became. After we've kind of defined, this is what we want to do, this is the kind of automation we want to have, then we, were, we came in with Script Runner on both Jira and Confluence to help orchestrate and automate some of this stuff, okay? So let me, I'm going to switch over to laptop and I'll show you a little bit of a demo of what we have. Okay.